I'm Kelly, and we've had so much fun together already. I'm so glad that you're back for more. I love discovering new things, like the fact that your favorite TV show right now is... That's mine too! Or that the very best flavor of ice cream is... I love Rocky Road. Or that people should definitely be able to wear flip-flops all year long. <laughs> so comfy, so easy. It's amazing what you can find out when you really focus on something. When you take a closer look, you see things you never noticed before. You might even learn something about what you can't see because of the things you can see. Our relationship with God is kind of like that. We can discover more about him as we focus on him every day. We'll discover another great way to focus on God today. But first, it's time for a game. This one's called Guess Em All. First, you'll need a piece of paper and a pen. Also, ask a parent or older brother or sister or whoever you live with and see if they wanna help you play the game too. You can pause this video while you grab that pen and paper and see who else wants to help you play. Ready? Go! All right, you're about to see a series of random images, 30 of them to be exact. When the video is over, you'll try to remember as many of those random items as you can. The answers don't have to be in order. Just write down as many of them as you can remember on your piece of paper. But here's the most important part. You can't write anything while the video is playing, okay? You have to wait until after it ends. All right, let's do this. Remember, don't write anything down. Just watch the video and try to remember everything you see. Three, two, one, go! Now, let's see how many you can remember. You've got 30 seconds to write down your answers. Ready, go! how you did. We'll show the answers and you can pause the screen and see how many you got right. If you have any of the items written on your paper, put the check mark next to them. Then add up your total. All right, here we go. Did you have some of those answers written down on your paper? How many? Oh, nice job. <laughs> I know that took some serious focus. Now, let's focus on our amazing God by singing and worshiping him together. Get up on your feet, everybody. I'm gonna quit. 
your mouth has to do to create sound. Any sound, every sound, sounds like and sounds like and even like None of those sounds happened by accident. We were blessed with amazing verbal and linguistic abilities. So blessed, in fact, that even now, as I'm whispering, you can understand me because I'm articulating every word very clearly. <laughs> Humans have amazing skills, right? We can lift up giant boulders. and we can screw in the tiniest screw into very complicated machinery. How did we get to the point where we could do that? Well, some scientists think it happened when we as a species developed speech. Just look at everything going on while I'm talking. Our mouths do such a complicated dance in order to talk that all of our physical skills got better, more precise. Now, if you ever think, Come on, talking, I don't see what the big deal is. <laughs> well then try talking without your tongue. Oh, this is incredibly difficult. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, just as important are your lips and teeth. P, D, T, B. Just imagine all of the words you wouldn't be able to say if you couldn't manipulate your mouth this way. What was that? I, I couldn't understand you. <laughs> but it's not just the stuff in our mouth that affects sound, it's also the nasal cavity. See, right now, you can probably tell I'm losing a lot of the details in my voice, because we often think that sound only comes out of our mouths, but it also comes out of our nose, too. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. No, I did. What was that? 
You want to know how much money it would be to mail a package to Indiana? Oh, uh, yeah, very good point, Wilson. The point Wilson is trying to make, none of this would even matter without our vocal cords. The sound comes up out of our throat until it reaches our head, all the way to the top, until it finally comes out of our mouths. Oh, that's so much better. It's changed by our tongue. What do I do now? Same thing we do every day, Samantha. Listen to Kyle talk forever. <laughs> until it finally comes out of our nose. Ah, Ooh. <laughs> back to normal. <laughs> this still is uncomfortable. You know you can stick your tongue back into your mouth now, right? Ah, that's better. Yeah. Although talking with my tongue out made my throat really dry. I could use some water. What are you talking about? <laughs> Wait a second. Do I have the power to make that noise every time I tell a dad joke? Uh, we'll, we'll see in a little bit. We're right back after this. <gasps> wait, 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 wait. What type of cheese is not yours? <clears throat> Nacho cheese! <laughs> this is blowing my mind. Uh, 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 what time do ducks wake up in the morning? <laughs> At the quack of dawn. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> no, 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 don't go, don't go, don't go. No. I've literally got millions. Seeing it, uh, maybe if you turn it sideways. Uh, nope. Oh, hey, Kellen here, and I'm looking at an optical illusion. If you look at it a certain way, you're supposed to see a 3D picture pop out. Here, see if you can see it. Do you see it? Hey, it's a dragon eating a donut. No, it's a baseball player using a rubber chicken as a bat. It's just a bird, a normal bird. Yeah, I still don't see it. Okay, but I also have this one here. This is cool. So the lines look like they're moving, but they're actually not. It's playing a trick on our eyes. The way these lines are put together gives them the illusion of movement. Crazy, right? We've been talking this week about taking a closer look at what's around us. When we're taking a closer look, maybe we can see things that we hadn't seen before, or maybe we can see things in a new way. Our Bible story today is asking us to take a closer look into who Jesus is. We're in the book of Matthew, and when we pick up the story in chapter 16, Jesus has already been on the scene for a while, and people are wondering, who is this guy? He's doing miracles, he's feeding the poor, he's hanging out with all kinds of people the rest of the world look down on. He's teaching new things. Who is he exactly? So we read that Jesus was walking down the road and he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? His disciples turned to each other and they didn't answer for themselves. They told him what other people were saying. They told him, some say you're John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. That's what the disciples said. But let's say you asked people today, who is Jesus? You would probably hear a lot of different things too. Maybe some would say, he's a great teacher. Some people might say he's a great rabbi or preacher. People might see how he healed the sick and call him a doctor. People might say Jesus is love, that he is the light of the world, that he is a shepherd for his people. People have a lot of different thoughts about who Jesus is. But let's go back to the story now. His disciples had given him answers of what others were saying, but then Jesus asked his disciples, but what about you? Who do you say I am? I wonder if the disciples were scared here. They were put on the spot. Maybe they didn't know exactly who Jesus is, or maybe they didn't wanna say what they thought. But here, Jesus was asking them point blank, 
Who do you say that I am? They had to answer for themselves. But then, after a moment, Peter spoke up. He too might have been scared or unsure, but he said this, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Now, Jesus is many of those things we listed, but Peter recognized he is so much more. And here's the thing, you're invited to recognize the same thing. If you see that Jesus is the Messiah and ask him to be a part of your life, he can and he will continue to change your life forever. Now, Jesus went on to tell Peter that his answer was revealed to him by God and that Peter will be the rock that he would build the church on. Now, here's the thing about Peter. He wasn't perfect. He said some pretty wild things and made some pretty big mistakes, but he was honest and he wasn't scared to say what he was thinking or ask questions of Jesus or other people. Peter took a closer look at Jesus. He saw the way Jesus loved, the way he taught, the way he changed the world. Peter realized Jesus is the Messiah. We can learn a lot by being honest and asking questions just like Peter. You can talk with people about what you believe, especially talk with people in your life that you can trust, like your parents or your small group leaders. The more you talk about what you believe, the more you can learn from others and the more others can learn from you. That's it for today. I'll see you guys soon as we continue to take a closer look. So folks, why did the mushroom like to party all the time? Because he was a fun guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So folks, I just flew into town this morning and boy are my arms tired. <laughs> no. You get it? You get it? Because I'm implying that I flew here using my arms, which would be very tiring indeed because I'm, I'm not a bird. We're not a flying species. Great. <laughs> Jokes, right? They're great. One of our greatest uses of our gift of speech. Why can't you tell a pig a secret? Because they always squeal. <laughs> that was the best one. <laughs> wait, wait, I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna try something. Hey, hold on, hold on. Fine. Think about how incredible all of the gifts of speech are. You've got jokes, you've got singing. Figaro, 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 Figaro. To be or not to be. <gasps> Let's try to be! Oh, um, psst. That's not the line. Yeah, I know, but mine's way better anyway. I mean, Shakespeare's great and all, but what's he even done lately? <sighs> You even have fun stuff that's not based around words, like beatboxing. That was incredible. There's no way any of us could learn how to do that. Wow, that was pretty <laughs> amazing. Well, have you ever had an idea that was like really hard to communicate? Like you knew what you wanted to say, but you didn't know exactly how to say it. Well, our voices and the sounds that our mouth makes are what make up all of the words in our dictionary. And I mean, that's just English. There are languages all over the world, like uh, Chinese, for instance. It's not just what you say, but how you say it that changes the whole meaning of your words. Well, that's true for English too, Kyle. How so? Huh? There's a big difference between thanks a lot, Kyle, and Thanks a lot, Kyle. Okay, 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, how do you like to use your voice? Are there any favorite things that you like to talk about? Oh, um, mine is how much I love my friends Aww. and how lucky I am to be on this show. <laughs> yeah, I like correcting people. And boy, does it feel good. All right. Uh, well, what else do you like to use your voice for? Um, are, are there any ways you like to use your voice that you really love? Oh, yes! I love to sing. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do it yet, but I'm determined to learn how to beatbox. <gasps> I'm so close. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to get there. I'm yeah, gonna, I heard I'm gonna keep practicing somewhere in there. Me too, me too. Yeah. Uh -huh. However, you like to use your voice. Remember, uh, it, you were created to use it, so use it to the fullest. Sing. <laughs> la, 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 la. Tell <laughs> jokes. Learn how to beatbox. No matter how you want to use your voice, remember, it's a gift, and we're all way better off for hearing it. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on A Closer Look. <laughs> oh, man, learning how to beatbox is exhausting. Oh, yeah, you look pretty beat. <laughs> I did it! Did you hear that? I did it! I did it! Yes! Yes! <laughs> This is my faith, this is my focus All of my days, I know where my hope is I live it loud, I shout the chorus Because I know, oh, you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will and keep on looking, looking, looking to you For where I'm going, knowing you go there too I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you i fix my eyes on you
All of us have things that we wonder about God. Things that make us go, <laughs> That's why it's great to talk things through with someone you trust. Maybe you've heard about Jesus before, and you've heard that he died on the cross for our sins. Maybe you know that Jesus rose from the dead and that if we put our faith in him, we have the promise of eternal life. If that sounds like a big deal, it is. Have you ever really talked about that with someone before? Have you ever really asked questions about that before? Have you ever thought about whether you believe it for yourself? Remember, you can talk with others about what you believe. You can focus on God by talking about him with other people. Here's a question you can talk about together. What is God doing in your life right now? That's a good one, huh? <laughs> I bet he's doing some things in your life that the people around you don't even know about. And I bet they've got some stories to share too. Talk it over with whoever is there with you right now in your house or apartment, and I'll see you next time, okay?